Welcome everyone. This is Will, KMAC Vintage, to you. Coming to you on a Friday afternoon. Uh, it's five o'clock here in Cayman. I'm also at six p.m. in the States Eastern, five Central. Uh, was that four Mountain and three Pacific? So anyway, welcome everyone. And I decided to do a very quick little stream because one. I'm just in a great mood. I'm doing here doing some very good work and really enjoying it. Um, working on these little pur purple suckers. Uh, these are the ROM SIM programmers. So um, today I listed them on my coffee site for sale because um, between Doug Brown, um, yeah, between Doug Brown, the original original creator of the ROM SIM programmer. And also the um, my other my other team members and so forth. We've been working very hard, and uh, we got the actually GitHub set up. We have the links going back to Doug Brown's um, releases going um, while that's up and working. Doug Brown has has created a new actually bootloader, a new firmware, and he's updated the actually utility program that you run on your Windows or your Mac. Um, he's updated those to work with the new stuff, um, and he, they're also signed and approved and notarized or whatever this other stuff is that is needed to be done by Microsoft and by Apple to make sure that they um, recognize the software as actually as actually legal, legit, clean, safe, good to work with. So it's there. Um, the links are up. If you go to the GitHub page. Uh, let me see if I have it here. Um, yeah, I do. Okay. Give me one second here. I'll copy this and I'll put it into the chat. Um, you go to that link and then from there you can branch off to um, Doug Brown stuff. It's all in there. And you can see what some of it is. And then if you also want to see the programmer itself, you can go to this site. This is the coffee page directly to the shop. That will then allow you to see um, <clears throat> what it is and some more information and so forth about it. Um, I have nine of them built. Well, sorry, I've got four here. I got five over here. I have one more to build, and then all nine are built. Uh, these are the nine that have been listed to sell. Out of the nine, five are already sold, believe it or not. Five of them sold within like five hours. So very happy, very, very good. Um, so I have one more to build, and I wanted to make a video for you all to see how this is built um, because I have not done that yet. I have not posted up any video of it. So let's see how we make one of these, right? So, because um, I do have, I bought a total of 30 boards, okay? So right now I have I have 10, I have nine that are gonna be built um, that, that went up for SE sale. Um, I may have another one. Um, I may sell mine too, because mine, mine is here. Um, because I have another one, I, and I can always build more of these for myself, so. <laughs> Um, I have the original, I have the original one, which was this one, which was the actually prototype. So I can still use this. The, this here works fine. I mean, I'm I'm not complaining. Um, so, and this has the 646 chip on it instead of the 128, uh, 128.6. So, anyway, um, so yeah, I may add mine. I may increase the sales depending how it goes. Then I also have ROMs. Um, I have the four megabyte ROMs. These are the blue ones. These have actually two two chips on them. Now they will be blank. Okay, I'm not putting any ROM on them um, for now. And then this is the eight. This is the eight megabit ROM. That's got four. It's got four actually chips on it. Now please do note. I'm going to say it from now that you all know. These are not cheap. Okay. I mean, each one of these chips is like ten dollars a piece. So you're looking at forty dollars cost right here before anything so um and these are a little bit lower these are about eight dollars a chip so i mean but still uh, you don't expect these things to be 10 or 15 dollars because that's not gonna happen okay um so 
on the board, what do I need to do? I need to put on, um, I do have a little a little fix I need to do to the actually USB connection. So we'll do that first. Um, then from, from the actually USB, we'll go to the switch. Then we'll go to the two big chips. I got a small chip here to put on, a small IC. Uh, but we'll talk about it as I go through the process. Um, it's not that complicated. It, it won't take too long. Oh my God, things are going crazy, Caribbean. Uh, okay, YouTube saying that I'm now live. And see, you see my power bill came in. Oh my God, nice. Anyway, so for all of those that are supporting and that are buying these ROM programmers, thank you so much. Um, I do want to point out that some of the funds do go back to actually Doug Brown, who originally created this. Um, it's not a project that is being done in the dark. He is well aware of it. He is on the team. Um, and I really appreciate that. Um, we are looking at ways to make these a bit um, simpler, easier, and so forth. I'm not sure if I want to sell these as a kit because it can be a bit complicated. So, um, but um, now if I can get it as a kit with the uh, with some of the SMD stuff already on it. And then we sell that as a kit, and then you just have to put on some of the some of the through hole items. Maybe we can do that. Um, but uh, I need I need to focus this a bit better for me. Then I'll focus it for you. For you, it looks good. Yeah, okay. So what I need to do here, no, so, so let me finish my story what I was saying about the kit. If I can get this made with the SMD stuff already on it, which is already most of it, really. I mean, the only thing that won't be on is the switch, the ISP connector, um, and the ROM SIM, and the actually SIM socket. So you're looking at three things. I mean, really, it's not going to save you too much more because everything else is actually SMD. So... Um, I don't, I don't think it's going to save you too much. All right. So what I need to do, okay, is here on the USB connection, this is the USB connection. Okay. Five pads. This, 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 this is power five volts, D minus D plus. This is nothing. This is, I think they call it OTR or OTG or something. Um, but it's not being used by anything. And then this is supposed to be ground. Well, my problem is that these two are not supposed to be connected. Okay, this has been fixed in the new board design, uh, but in this version, it, it's not. So I have to cut this. So basically, we are going to score this and separate these two. And the thing is, I don't do just a basic cut. I take out a big chunk of it because I want to make sure that it's not connected. Okay, so that's all we got to do there. Okay. Now, on the connector, uh, where did I put the connector? Where are you? Here you are. Okay. Now, if we look at this connector... Where are you? There you are. Okay. We have the five pins. Again, this is power, D minus, D plus. This is number four that's not needed. So I'm going to push that out of the way. And then this, uh, this is ground. Okay. Now the shielding is also supposed to be ground. So uh, what I'm going to do here then is we are going to cut this off. We, this is my secondary measure that I do for safety to make sure that this pin does not touch and does not get soldered, does not get bridged or anything. So we cut that off. That's that. All right, now we go back to the board. We good in focus there. Yes, we are. All right, so now I'm going to put down some solder mask. Well... 
flux, that's automatic. All right, the soldering iron is on. Clean it. I'm going to put some solder on the tip. And let's go ahead and put this in, this whole sock in here. And now I'm going to, I can't see through the flux too good, so as soon as I heat it up, it's going to become clear. Okay, and so now I just... little tab there and that is soldered oh my god i don't know why that went so yellow something with the correction i need to spend some time fixing some of these settings on my camera okay so now the other thing too is i'm gonna fill these up with solder Okay, so now I'm going to flip it over, and um, can you all see that, or is it getting, okay, there. Uh, three people watching, Retro Techie, welcome. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining, I appreciate it. So the ROM sim programmers are coming along very nice, and they, they, they don't take me long to build anymore. Okay, so socket is on. Next thing we're going to put on now is right here, we're going to put in a switch. The switch is something like this. Uh, there you are, you see? So it's got your three positions and your ground. This is the same type of switch Ron uses on his battery adapters. So these snap in pretty good, and it holds pretty well. So let's go ahead and solder this down. You may not see all the holes, but I do. So um, if it's out of view, I'm sorry, uh, but I am going to solder it. Oh, that, that was hot. That was hot. That's what I get for not showing you, huh? I get to burn myself. So if anyone wants to join in the chat, you I mean join in the stream, you're more than welcome. I don't have anyone watching now. It says zero, everyone gone. But it's all right. I'm here to record this and show it and leave it for the others to see later. That's the nice thing with YouTube. You don't have to watch it all right now if you don't want to. Uh, let's go put on this this chip. This IC2 chip is really a port replicator, meaning it gives you some more ports. The MCU will end up talking with this chip and um, give the MCU some more actually GPIO ports. So basically, that's all that is. That's Flint. Welcome. Nice to see you. Oh, you're watching still retro? Okay, yeah. I don't know why it's showing me zero watching, but it's okay. Um, so, Flint, welcome. I guess you're having a hard time sleeping, to, uh, sleeping today tonight because it is nighttime for you for you it's well it's not so late it's only 10 o'clock 11 o'clock there for you okay so we're gonna put down this chip this like i said this is the port replicator because on the mcu each of the GPIO ports that are there are, are needed for the data, for the data address bus and for the address bus itself. And some other functions that the actually SIM, that the ROM SIM needs. Um, but the MCU doesn't have enough to, to meet the needs of the, of the SIM. So now it needs this, it needs this replicator. And I think on here are 16, 16 data 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 bus lines um now what i'm going to do here on the soldering so that you know this chip barely fits on this footprint okay so i really gotta watch how close i am to the soldering it's for me to for me to tack it down
Okay, so I tack down that one. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to straighten it up a little bit. And I tack down that one. Okay, so now I'm just going to hit each one of these. And you can see how nice. Maybe you can't see it because I'm not zoomed in good. But let me zoom in some more and focus this for you. Now you're going to see how nice, how simple this flows. Watch. I'm just going to touch it. Boom. There it is. See? That's all I need. See? That's it. It's so nice to watch this solder flow sometimes. It's relaxing. It's peaceful. See? So... See that? As long as it heats up a little bit, and away it goes, it flows. So yes, my the ROM the ROM programmers have really been a nice hit. They've been selling pretty good. They're on the coffee site. If you all want to see, read the information and find it. It's um, scroll up a little bit in the comments, and you'll find the link. Um. They've been selling pretty good. Um, again, we're, we're keeping the price as low as we can. I'm not in this for me to make a book of some money or profit big time. Um, I'm more like to see the community get a product that they want. And that is needed. Okay, so this chip is done. Mac 84, hey Steve, how are you? Thank you for watching. Um, so we're building one of the ROM, one of the ROMs, um, ROM IG programmers. So I got the port actually replicator chip on. So now we're gonna do this 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 bigger circuit um, sucker. This is the IC one. This is the main MCU. Um, this is a Atmel eighteen ninety USB. It can take either a six four six six four seven chip. That's got sixty four k of flash. Um, but those are hard to get. Those are very hard to find. So, but the 128.6 or 128.7 are a bit easier to get, although they cost a, bit, a little bit more, but they have 128K of, of actually flash in them. So these are using the 128, the actually 1286 chip. And the problem was with that was that the... Um, yes, I know you bought one, Steve, and thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate the help there. I, it will be something very nice. Um, I hope you're doing good. Too. Yes, I'm doing pretty good here. I'm really enjoying enjoying today. Today, I don't know, it just feels like a great day, you know? I guess one of those soldering days where you, you, you're just happy. And I guess that's what I have today. I got a tons of boards to work on, Steve. I'm the, I'm the same as actually you. When I was in Florida, people send me like 20 boards and I got to work on them. And some of them are some of them are your actually favorites, like like the Mac Portable. I I actually have 3 of those now I need to work on. Uh so anyway, um So what I'm doing here is I can't see through the flux, but as soon as I put a little bit of heat on it, it becomes it becomes translucent where I can see through it. Now I'm trying to line up. I'm going to solder one pin, but I need to see if that one lines up pretty good too. So I just solder that one. Now I'm going to go to the opposite corner, and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. Again, I need to see a little bit of translucent here, so I just touch the flux and it will clear up. I'm, I am very well centered there, very well centered over there, so I'm just going to tap that one. That chip is not going to move anymore. That's it. Uh, 
So, so basically what I decided to do this weekend, Steve, was I'm going to build all my programmers, all my ROMs, all my Tash 20s and all that, because I'm going to send out a package Monday to actually Jake up in the States, uh, which will have all the stuff in it that is, that is sold on the website. And then he will be shipping them out. So if I ship them out of here on Monday, he'll probably get them on Wednesday and he'll ship them out. Unfortunately, I can't ship them all directly from Cayman because the cost would be way too much. So this weekend, I'm going to build my inventory of goods, and then on Monday, I will start my work on these boards for these other people. And I'm going to start off with that Mac Portable. The Mac Portable is, I think, is from someone that some of you know, um, Jim Myers or James Myers. Um... I already looked a little bit at the board when I was when I was up in the states, and I did find uh, one broken tray so far. I didn't fix it there because up there I don't have the best microscope, so I come to fix it here in Cayman. So now I'm not drag soldering because I mean I know that goes a lot quicker sometimes, but this way here I can be sure that they're each good, and I love to see how the solder flows, and I like to share that with you all to see isn't isn't it mesmerizing? I mean just look at this. I'm just gonna touch that pad and you're gonna see the solder flow. Look at this. Yep. There we go. She's done. So we have the two main chips on. The next one is this little sucker that's down here, this IC3. This IC3, all that it does is that it filters or it's like a surge protector on the USB D minus and, and the actually D plus. That's all it is. Okay, so it's just a little bit of protection just to make sure that those two lines don't get any high voltages. Oh, Steve, you're going to the swap meet? Oh, my. It's going to be hot out there. Uh, everyone's going to come back with a nice sunburn or a nice tan. So the chip now, it's right here. Um, pin one is where the dot is. So there's a circle right there. So this is pin one. And I'm going to turn it this way. And let me clear up some of this flux and make it translucent so you can see. Now, there's no dot or nothing here on the silk, on the actually silk screen print to tell you where pin one is. But instead, there is a line. Okay. So we see here that this line goes all the way to a pad and then some I mean it's right next to the whole pad so this is pin one okay so one two three four five six so again we're gonna put that on there I'm gonna center it and I'm just gonna touch a leg touch a leg touch a leg that side done and we now go touch the other side okay so I have all of the bigger items put on who's in the chat there Luke hi Luke how are you um, Flynn Rock will on your website you need to put the link to your coffee page and vice versa on my web oh yeah well that's on the website I don't really that website I need to I need to go and create it I need to put some stuff on there but yeah, I'll go put a links on there too. I think there's already a link to my YouTube, but not, but not to the, um, and that. So yeah, I need to spend some time on the website, but I just don't have the time. I almost, I almost decided to go to yeah, Retro Tech Chris. I saw your message, but yeah, it can be, 
if that if that was like a, on a <laughs> in a big old abandoned mall or or an indoor thing, it might it might be a bit nicer. <laughs> it might not be so hot. And then too, you get the benefit of a cooler area and and shade and that. So anyway, um, um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down all of my resistors. Okay, so I have resistor one and two. I'm just putting down some flux on them right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. Now, when I buy my things from like Mauser, for example, you can see here I put on it RSP. Okay, um, customer part number. RSP. So that is ROM SIM programmer. R1 and 2. So I know right away that this bag is going to go to actual it's going to go to actually resistor 1 and 2. Brill brilliant, huh? And I have my shopping cart made up and on the shopping cart all that is in there. All that information is there. So I'm gonna drop those two resistors onto the board. I'm sorry if it's a little bit out of focus right now. Give me a little, give me a few minutes for me to drop all these on the board, and then I'll come back and you can see what I'm doing. You see, so I dropped them right there. You can see two right there. Those are, um, these are what 22 ohm. Yeah, these are 22 ohm resistors that have to go onto D minus and D plus for the actually a USB communication to the chip, okay? It actually has to. There's no way actually around that. Um, it's something that you have to do. All right, now I have R3 and R4. These are two uh, 100K ohm resistors. I'm just going to drop them on the board for now, and then we'll come back later, and you'll see, and we will solder them down. Three and four are on there. Five. Five is one all by itself. This is a 10K. This goes right by the actually ISP connector that is needed for the ISP to work. Now the ISP programmer is used, you use the ISP programmer to program the actually boot actually loader. You don't need it for the firmware. Yeah, I hope it'll be nice. It'll be nice weather tomorrow. Tomorrow for you there, Steve. I've seen some previous ones where, I mean, you 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 have come back with a major sunburn and hot and, but but then yet you still seem very happy with all the products that you found. Okay, so now this is a 180 ohm resistor. This goes at R6 and R7. These two are used solely for the for the LEDs. Mike, hey, nice to see you here. Don't I, I don't see you too much in the channels, but at least I see you in person when I go up to Florida. So, anyway, um, so we now have the. Oh, I am way out of focus for for myself. All right, let's fix for you. All right, there we go. So I got these two resistors right here, R1 and R2. You can see they say 22 on them. Uh, I put some solder on my tip. I got my tweezers. Now, I'm a bit of a... I, 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 I like to have all my text the same way. So I had to turn that around. So I'm just going to tap one side. All right, I'll come back to it. Don't worry. I'm going to do everything on one side first. Okay, so R6 is a 180. Now, R6 is a 180 that's right here because it helps with this LED. Okay, there's an LED right here. This LED is for your actually activity when you're reading or writing to, to the SIM. Okay, so we tack one side. This one is for this one is to help with the with the actually replicator to give you more ports. 
I need some more solder. Okay, like I said, this one is the one that helps with the ISP connection. And then this one here also helps with the port replicator. All right, so I got one side. Now I can turn the board around and I can come and I can just touch the other side. The other side, the touching the other side goes very quick. Because once you have one side done, it's not going to move again. And there we go. We're all done. The resistors are all down. <clears throat> let, me, let me read some messages. Uh... Bring a wagon. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid to ask what size that wagon is going to be. Don't go spend too much, Steve. You got too much in that basement already. <laughs> but then again, my room here is getting just as bad. I made a pact. I'm not buying more. I'm not buying unless I get a very good buy. All right. But I have not bought a computer in months. The only one I bought was that Mac Portable because it was a very good price. I got it for actually 200 bucks, and so I took that one. Sloopy, good evening. How are you? Is this the Lisa board? No, Mike, this is not for the Lisa. This is the uh, ROM SIM programmer. My damn head, head, headphone ear cup stitch, stitching gave up. So this is the ROM SIM. This is the ROM SIM programmer. I told you I was working on them when I saw you up in Florida. Um, so uh, this is my ninth one that I'm building, or actually it is my tenth. But anyway, um, so now I have the actually capacitors to put on, and C1 is right there. Again, too, these bags are also labeled the same way that I told you before. Like here, I have RSP. C1, so I know this goes to actually capacitor one. And that's how I buy all of my things. I try to label it so because I, I get so many products, so many things from Mauser and DigiKey that. Oh, I forgot one thing though. I didn't put down any flux yet on the capacitor pads. C1, C8, C5, C6, C4. Two, three, and seven. Yeah. Why I like the flux on it now is because when I drop the capacitor on there, I try to drop it as close onto the pad. And if the flux is there, it will drop into the flux and it will stick. That way it doesn't go all over the place. Okay, these things are so small to find that if you drop them on the floor, forget it, kiss it goodbye. You might as well just take out another one. <clears throat> okay, that was C2 and 3. This is C4, 5, 6, and 7. They all use the same. So there goes 5. There goes 4. There goes 6. There goes seven. Okay. Trust me, they are on the board. You'll see in a minute. And the last one is C8. I'm in... I'll be watching all of the videos made by all the others from here at VCF, yeah. <laughs> now VCF, I mean, uh, tomorrow is an ash, is an is an ash, is an actually a swap meet. So usually they hold it like at an old drive-in cinema or a old actually flea market grounds or something. I don't, I'm not sure where it is this year. I am still planning to go to VCF Midwest. Okay, so now we are with the capacitors. So you can see how close they all dropped because of the flux being there to hold it. C1, this is C8. Uh, 
That's when I see five. You know, we're almost done with this. This is C3. This is used by the Archie Crystal. So again, I'm just going to solder one side for right now, and then I'll come back and turn the board and I can get all the other side. This is C6 and C4. SMD components like this, they're small, but they're so easy to put on. And a little bit of flux and a dab of solder. That's it, there, there. Now I can come and get the other side. Now I don't need tweezers anymore. Okay, that's it. Resistors and capacitors are all on. Now what is left are two LEDs. The first LED is right there. This. Let me see if I can get it straighter for you. Uh, where are you? Right there, LED. Okay, and the second LED is down by the power switch. Oh, I forgot one resistor, R7. Let's go back and get that one. It's on the board loose, but because I stuck it in the... You see it there? I forgot about that one. Flip you over. Come on. Go stick in the flux so that you don't move all over the place. Okay, so those are the two LEDs here. This is for the power. This will be a red, and this one will be a green. So let's go grab the green one. That's dropped on there. As this is my last one to build, after this I can put away all of this all these parts that I needed to make these. And then the other LED, okay. So let's go put these down. A um, Little bit of solder. All right, now we notice on the LED, the backside, you got the line and then you got this, this pointer, like this other line shooting down. Um, you can think of this as a triangle okay think of that pointer has to, that pointer is a pointing towards actually ground towards actually negative okay and on this design on this on the, on this silk screen print you got the box and this side is open so you got a box there but this side open inside the box is ground and you can see it too because it's going from this pad to to this actually resistor and then this actually resistor the other side goes to actually ground so you can see that it is ground and on this side of the LED that small little white dot you see right there that is signifying the actually ground side negative side cathode and anode don't but don't ask me which one is which I can never seem to remember which which one is which so anyway uh, positive and negative that's what I call them See, so like this is backwards right now, okay? This is the positive, positive pad because I know that this rail right here, this trace 
is 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 the actually voltage side so this needs to flip over come on okay there we go My glasses are a bit dirty. Okay. All right, so two more things to put on before I can test. I can actually test it right from now, but I'm just gonna put on this crystal. Again, this crystal goes right there. She's on. The last item is the ISP pin header. That's going to go in right there. Okay. So I'll turn this over. Where now I can at least I solder one side, one pin. Then I take a look and make sure everything is leveled good and centered. Okay, now I can hit the rest. Okay, so we're we're built. The only thing missing is the is the sim socket. Let me read some comments for one minute. Okay, let me see what's all here. Um, 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 I sloopy. Uh... Let me look around. I see 15, 20 DigiKey boxes within 15 feet of me. <laughs> I'll be watching all the videos for Lint. I was planning on going, but girlfriend took the car to go to her parents, and I am the backup for a show tomorrow. Okay, well, PCS swap meet uh, nearby a large parking lot. Okay. boot fairs yeah those are yeah you can call it i mean a boot fair is the same it's it's almost the same i mean because this is going to be just like a bunch of bunch of vans and trucks and pickup trucks and, and other type of cars and they actually whip out a table and put things right behind it and try to sell them i mean or um trunk sale or actually boot sale we have them here in cayman too anode is negative okay well there you know anode is negative i gotta remember that I, I can never seem to remember anode anode and cathode. So anyway, okay, so that is uh, my two alcohol bottles are empty, but it's okay. So what I want to do now is I'm gonna we're gonna connect this and let me switch cameras here. So now I know that um, Trina and and Frodo Jedi and them have their other stream at 7 p.m. my time tonight. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bump into that one. This will finish before that because I'm almost done making this. But I'm just surprised no one else has joined in. But anyway, it's okay. Not everyone can join in all the time. So anyway, um, so this is somewhat ready to get a test. You see, the only thing missing is still the SIM socket, and I have that sitting. Where's my SIM socket? Oh, yeah, here it is. So that's sitting right here, so that still has to go right there. But anyway, what I want to do is see if I get a beep. Okay, so as soon as I plug this in, well, as soon as I plug it in, I'm still not going to get nothing. But I turn on the switch, and the light comes on, and I have a beep. So Windows is detecting the bootloader that is already on this MCU. Okay, but it's it is not the proper it's not the proper bootloader. So what we're gonna do is turn that off. Um, I'm gonna switch these things around because I want to share my screen here and I want y'all to see what is happening. So I'm gonna move my Streamyard and my OBS to the other monitor. Okay, now I can. 
bring these other things down to this monitor. All right, let's see if I can get this display capture. Let's see what you all see. Okay. Uh, first one is this. This is the first one that I want to work with. Okay. This is just command line. I'm going to be using an energy program that is a command line programmer called AVR Dude. Dude, man, yes, it works. So, and I have but I need to try to make this smaller because I need, I want you to see what I'm doing on my screen too. So anyway, okay, give me one second here. Let me, let me try to shrink down the size of this. Sorry, this is making everyone very dizzy. Oops, I grabbed the wrong one. Okay, so all right, so you can at least see what I'm doing here. I have I have this is the programmer here. This is my this is my um, AVR programmer that works with AVR dude. I'm gonna connect that in. I'll get a beep, okay? Now on this here, on this on this win on this DOS window. I already have it in here, so I'm just going to hit up, and then this is going to program the the proper bootloader into the actually into the actually MCU. It's going to program it. It's going to verify it. There it goes. It's verifying it. Then it's going to set a couple fuses that are needed, and there it is. Now that's been programmed. Okay, that's it. With this, with this AVR programmer ISP thing, I'm now done with that. I don't need that no more. I don't need that cable. That cable can go over there. Now we go back to the cable that connects to the programmer itself. So we're going to plug this in. And now I should get a Windows detecting it. Okay. And on the other thing that you'll see also is I'm going to bring this one in here now. This is the programmer software. So as soon as I turn this on, that should actually pop up. And there we go. All right. Windows is now saying that it has found a new USB device called actually Mac ROM SIM programmer, and it's installing it. So it's going to install it. There it is. It's now installed. And on the SIM programmer software, that has now popped up. Okay. So... Uh, now I can make this huge again, and you can see I can get rid of this other one. Oh, not from there though, from here. And there is the ROM SIM programmer. There, there's a software for it. I don't have any chip or anything. I don't have the SIM in there right now, so because I don't even have the SIM socket installed. So can't even do anything, but we can do an actually electrical test. It's going to go do that, and it's going to come up and say, oh, unable to communicate. Yes, of course it's going to be unable to communicate, because what did I forget to do? Well, this, I only programmed the actually bootloader so far with the ISP programmer. It doesn't have any actually firmware in there. So... How do you update the firmware? Well, you do that right out of the same program. You go here to advance, and there is update firmware. And I have a file right here called Sim Programmer Firmware 1.4. 1, 1. And that's the file I take. It's now been updated. It's now in there. That's it. So anytime that a new firmware is actually released, that's all you got to do. That's it. It programs through the actually through the actually USB itself. You don't need any special programmer. You don't need AVR dude. You don't need any special commands or nothing. You just go to advance, upload it. That's it. Now, if I do electrical test, it should come up and say electrical test passed actually successfully. Now, you're wondering, okay, well, what's the point of that actually electrical test, right? Okay. So, what if I am to short? two pins okay 
um, data lines or something. I don't know. I'm just picking two here. I don't know if these are... Um, all right. So I'm going to run this test again now. And you see what it tells me? D1 shorted to actually D actually 14. So, and I am shorting some pins. I am shorting some. Uh, we go again. You know, I must not have some pins that are needed. Maybe some. Now, it's only checking the actually D lines and the address lines and actually so forth. Let's see what this one tells me. Okay, none either. Okay, so it will detect certain certain shorts. Okay, especially handy, especially handy when you are um, when you've got a, when you've got a ROM SIM and you stick it in the socket. You don't know if it's good or what or so forth. But it also helps me to de to detect if I have any bridges or any on any of the chip legs that I soldered, or if I did anything else wrong. Um, let me go back to the other camera. Okay, so if I've got any of these legs, I shall. If I got any, any, any of them bridged there or here, or if there's something wrong with the sim, with the sim that's going to go in there and so forth. So anyway, so right now I turned it back off. Um, what I want to, where did my sim socket go? Okay, I want to put in the, I want to solder in the actually sim socket so then we can put in a real chip and an actually real sim. And we can test that out. So let's go back to my scope view here. Let's see if any questions. Uh, let's see. What are people saying here? Hello, Trina. Uh, glad to, that you're here. You said you said the same thing to me. Oh, pretty. One, one. <laughs> uh, well, I only have four of these left on this batch. I need to order some more supplies today. Dude, where's my ROMs? Flint, what do you mean ROMs? I can't have one of those. Can't have one of those. Uh, Garth, welcome. Yes, it is an it is a nice little device. I like it. It's very simple, and um, surprisingly, we are working on one that is even simpler. But uh, that's a whole different song and dance. So right now, I want to. I gotta solder this in, so um, I know it's gonna be boring. I have 64 points here to solder, and my solder iron went out. All right, so some of these you all will be able to see me do, some you won't. So the first one, though, I gotta make sure I get this in straight and down all the way. Let's go to one on the other side. Okay, so y'all see good? Yes, okay. Uh, so yeah, I listed nine of these for sale on the coffee site. Five are sold already. But we did some, I did something nice. Um, well, I think I did something nice. It's, the first four that were sold, I am including a four megabyte blank ROM SIM. Um, but I think I'm going to do that for the first five that were sold. So I don't have, I only have five. I only have parts to make five, so that's all I can do. I do have some parts to make some of the eights, but those I can't really give away. <laughs> those are expensive, expensive ROM sims to make because each each mem each ROM chip is actually ten dollars. So you can see, and it and it takes four of them. So I mean, that's forty dollars right there. I don't have them listed on the site yet because I don't have them made. But I will be making them over the weekend, and I'll put them on there. Now, um, Jake and I are dealing with Canada and the U.S., 
if there are people in other parts of the world that also want this, um, please please make contact with us. We can handle it. Um, Joachim is based in Sweden, so he will be he'll be making a batch also and selling them Europe side. Um, he'll deal with actually with actually with actually with actually Europe and with um, Australia and so forth. I'm pretty sure Bruce may want one. I hope. Okay, there we are all soldered in. That's sixty-four pins. That is done. Now we're gonna try this again. Now. Okay, so here we are with the dust view. Let me zoom this in a little bit. Okay, you got a bit of a better view there. Let me get rid of some of this mess. Okay, so. Always make sure that you put in your SIM, your ROM, with it either unplugged or off, okay? I can have it plugged in, okay, because right now it's off, okay? A switch is in the off position. Put that in, and now turn it on, and it'll beep. It will connect. Uh, let me do my share screen again. Uh, where are you? This, Okay. I want to try to make this a bit bigger for you. Okay, there you can see it good now. Um, the, these ROMs are any one that the actually ROMinator will actually work in, so most of the Macintosh 2 series. Well, I mean, the, that, that's the thing. It, 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 um, it's 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 the same as like when you buy a ROM from actually from actually from actually GG Labs, or from Purple, or from or from actually Big Mess of Wires. Matter of fact, a Big Mess of Wires used to sell these used to sell these uh, these actually programmers. Um, him, them, and Doug had an had an agreement where they were getting sold by actually big big actually mess of wires but in 2019 steve actually chamberlain stopped uh, stopped selling them so these actually rominators have not been on the market since actually 2019 um so okay so there we are uh is it it's a play on dude oh okay sorry flint I have money. Where do I order? You want to order? Uh, let me see if I still have it in my link here. Yeah. Uh, go to there. Um, you can order one, Sloopy. Um, I don't have them as a kit yet. I mean, I just built my last one. I don't have any parts right now for me to build a kit. I mean, I can probably, we can probably, since you know, since you build things for other people, I mean, I don't have a problem selling you a kit. Um, but really, it's not going to save that much. I mean, I have, I have these, I have these nine, these, these, these 10 that I'm going to send up to, uh, up to, up to Ashley Jake. Now, I'm only selling nine because one of them, one of them belongs to Ashley Jake. So um, out of the 10, he's keeping one and the other nine he can sell. So anyway, so on the on the software again, uh, we can we can do now that I have a sim in there, I can do actually identify chips, and then this will come up and it'll tell me that it's got IC one, IC two, um, and the device IDs. And this information you can find off of the off of the actual data sheet for the chips. And th this is correct. By the way, when I say that this can do multiple different types of sims on this actual on this actually drop down list here. You see, you can choose. They're all different sizes of actually ROM sims that are available. Okay, and like the ones from actually GG Labs, and I think also from Koba, um, Kai Koba in Japan. Um, he's using PLCC chips, so they're different sizes. They're like up to one meg or two megs. Um, two megs, I think his are because he was saying. 512k goes for the ROM image, and then 1.5 you can use for a boot as you drive. 
So his are all PLCC. So this here can do all that. So you don't need to unsolder the chip off of the off of the off of the sim and then take a rom and take a rom image file or actually uh, bin file uh, split it up you don't need to do any 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 actually swap bits or actually um swap bits within the bytes you don't need to do any of that okay because here this does the whole sim at one shot all right so this will automatically put it into the proper into the proper chips and and so forth for you um, so there are different sizes that it can handle. Now, um, mine, like these blue ones that we have, are the four meg, or the four megabyte two as a chip, um, which is the one that I've got highlighted right now. And the other ROM that we have is the eight megabyte, which is a four by a four by a sixteen um, that uses four as chips. I do not have these yet. These eight megabytes that use two, they use two by actually 32 megabyte chips. I don't have those. Okay. Uh, that's a fairly new one out there. Now, you know, you're wondering, okay, well, if the ROM image is only taken 512 K, then what am I going to do with all the rest? Well, that is like the actually Rominator. Rominator, um, I mean, on the two or the four megabyte version of theirs, the rest is the actually rest is an image is a it 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 is a boot image okay so you can you can you can use your actually emulator your 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 actually cheap shaver or your basilisk and make 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 a make an image with um 7.1 on it or 6.08 um install now granted you only have so much space okay so like on an 8 megabit like on, like on an eight megabyte, you have five hundred twelve that's being used. So you got seven point five megs that are available that you can use for an image. And then if you also compress that with the actually Rominator, with the actually big mess of wire compressor and and um, a, com a compression tool, you can probably squeeze quite a bit more on there. And then on that image, then you can put all of your all of your actually diagnostic software that you need. Okay, so now you have a machine that you're working on. You take your ROM that that works for that machine, like a SE30 or any of the other ones, um, and you boot off of that, and you have access to all your software and everything right there. Um, okay, I have I have I have blank ROMs. Okay, Sloopy, I have blank ones, and then. Um, because I have, I, I need to start playing around with making my own ROM images and so forth. I have not done that yet. So, um, if you give me a couple of days, I can try to see what to do with that. But if you go to the actually big mess of wires, Rominator site, um, he's got some great pages that tell you how to make ROMs and even provides you with a base image and, 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 and even blank partitions and so forth that you can use. I mean, he's got, um, Steve, Steve, Steve did an amazing job out there. He's got all that stuff already out there. Um, then also on, on actually Tinker Different, um, Kai Koba too has quite a lot of information on there of how to make ROMs and so forth. Now, his will break it up into four separate pieces because he's using the PLCC chips. Okay, um, so in my case here and in this case for this, you don't need to do that. Um, it can all be one file. So, but I mean, even if it breaks it up, then you can, you can, you can, you can just combine it back. It's, I it mean, it, it's easy to, it's easy to combine it back. Just, just a copy and the file names and just make sure you tell it each time that it's, that it's actually binary. That's it. Um, so you can easily remake remake a ROM and then just burn it on and then just program it onto here. Um, I don't have the eight, I don't have the ROMs on the page yet, Sloopy. If you give me over the weekend, I will have them there. Okay. Um, so uh, let me switch cameras here so you can see for a minute. So I do have I do have more of these. I mean, if where did I put my box? Ay, 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 ay. Oh, I'm getting old and sore. Okay, uh, see, all of these are ROMs to make. Okay, so I've got the boards. I just and I've got and I've got twenty chips, so I can make ten. Okay, now five of them I have given away already, so I'll be able to sell five of them. Now these these are the four megabytes. I have the eight also. 
So just give me give me give me the weekend. All right, and I'll and I'll add him to the site. So um So anyway, to go back to where we were with this, okay, we did a we did a identify of the chips. All right, so here's the software identify chips, and there we are. Now we can do electrical test again. Now this will check the physical SIM itself too, okay? So it is it is checking all the all the way to the SIM card. Um, so it's not finding any short anywhere, okay? Um, I got to make sure that I set this for the right chip. Now I I already have a file name and a safe location here. So, but if I wanted to change that, I can just do select file and I can pick a different file. So I'm gonna use that one. It's gonna give me a warning about overriding. Yes, and I can do a read sim now. Now it's gonna start reading that sim. If we go to here, you can see that the green light is on. You can see, yeah, you can see reading it finished there it goes all right um go back to the software page you can see that it has finished reading it okay now i can take that same file and i can actually write it back to write it back to the sim and i'm going to do and actually verify while it's writing erase and write entire sim so, so let's go ahead and write it and i was going to erase it And now it should start writing it, and you should see the light blink. Oh, sorry, let me turn off this camera. Let me turn off that screen share, okay? So now you can see it blinking, so it's busy writing it. All right, so it is writing it. Let me read and see what else is in here. Um, this is using the 29F. Um, the chips it's using is the 29F 800 chips. That's 44. That's 44 actually megabyte. Okay, so now it's writing and it's writing and actually verifying. So it, it it's it's a bit longer process. I had a bunch more emails come in. Did some more people buy some? So now that finished, let me see if five sold. No, nobody bought anymore. So anyway, okay, so that finished. Uh, we look here. Okay, the right operation finished and the content were ver they were verified successfully. So we click on this. Now this is done. Okay, another nice new, fe another nice feature that the software has. All right. Um, here okay flash individual chips okay so if you do if you're more advanced user and so forth i mean you can go to here to flash individual chips and then here you can read you can well you can write to them or you can read to individual chips okay so if you happen to have one of those smaller ones like a 512k that's got four actually plcc chips on them and you've got four actually separate files and and, and it's been split Okay, um, you can choose your files and you can still use this programmer for you to flash them individually to the chip. Okay, so that's a very nice feature that's in the software. The other thing I do got to say about the software too is that um, Doug Brown went through the trouble to make sure that the, the both of these both of these programs, the, the Mac version and the Windows version, They've been certified and approved and scanned and whatever else you want to, whatever else is needed by Microsoft and by Apple. So you will not get the warning messages about downloading something that could be dangerous um, or, or any problems running it on a Mac. Um, 
you may get the message once that says that you've downloaded this. You're sure you want to open it. You click on open, but then after that, you'll never see that message again. Okay, so it, they are, they are, they are, they have been approved, certified, notarized, whatever they call it, um, by Microsoft and by Apple. So that's very good to know, very good to have. So the software will be safe. As long as you download it from the actually Doug Brown site, um, you can follow the links from our GitHub that is on there also. Um, on the coffee site, you'll see all the links and so forth. Um, but yes, that's the, what else can I say about this? I mean, here, here it is. Um, this is with a, this is with a four megabyte ROM. Let me take this one out and I'm going to put in an actually eight. Now this is the eight, you see, so it's, it's got the four chips. So if I put that in there and I'm going to turn it on, the software detected it. Let's go back to the software. Here we are. Now, the only thing is here now, I need to switch this. Oh, we're clicking on the wrong damn thing. So I need to switch this to the 8 megabit. Now I can do identify chips. I'm going to go identify them, and all four should come up the same. There they are. These are correct also because I did verify that from the, from the data sheet. So now it's seeing all four, electrical test. Uh, there is no short on, any, on anything. Um, this is also very helpful because imagine if I was soldering these four chips, right? And... If we look at how close, let's go back to the scope for a minute. If we look how close these legs are, okay, I mean, you can see how close they are. I mean, this is so easy to actually bridge. Okay, so if, if I bridged one, and I happen to put it back into the sim tester. Well, well, into the sim actually programmer, and I do an actually electrical test. It will pop up right there, and and actually give me the warning that it is that it has a short. Okay, so it, this this electrical test is great. I mean, it's it's one of the nice features of, about the software. Okay, so this this is an eight megabit now. So. We're gonna we're gonna read this file to I'm gonna go here and save this to the eight override yes. And once I start reading it, there's gonna start. Let's look back and we can see the light it's it's reading is green. So it is busy reading it. So Writing, reading, working with a ROM sim, piece of cake now, as long as you've got this amazing device by Ashley Doug Brown. Um, I'm so happy that he agreed to work with us together. We've been working on this for already for Ashley, for Ashley, for Ashley a couple months. Um, this was, oh, we went through three or four different prototype boards and so forth and trial and things. And one of the things that you'll see, and I've said it on other, on other streams, this is the older design, and you can see the botch wires we had to do because of actually mistakes in the design of the board. Okay, from here over is still the same. The only thing we changed was the was the actually USB connector instead of using this big fat A connector. Well, sorry, B connector. Uh, we went to the smaller one. We added a switch and a LED here so that you know when this is on. All right, this side here. This was never, the software was never made to work with this yet, okay? Um, you could do some data logging, but that was it. Um, but the main programming software was not made to work with this yet, and there was no software written. The intention that Doug had with this was to make this to be able to work on a classic Mac also from the beginning. Um, so... Um, but he never wrote the software because this is a nine pin, so this could work off of the serial. But it was never made to work. Um, he never finished it. So to actually save cost, we got rid of this piece here. Hence why the new board looks like a like a triangle. Um, Joachim is going to be working on a case that we can put this in and make it a bit more durable, a bit nicer. I mean, Joachim designed the case for the actually for the actually macometer, which now. 
says Macometer there on the side. Um, and also on the new ones we have, it's kind of hard to see, but we have some numbers that are in, that are, that are sunken into the plastic. Okay. Yeah. You see there's 12, 12 is right there, five volt and negative 12. So it does have them in there. I wish I could make them a different color, but anyway, um, so he, he designed this case. It's very nice. This is printed by actually, um, JLC resin printed. Um, and we also notched this here so now it can fit into the back of a floppy drive so you can daisy chain it so you can connect a floppy drive to the machine and then plug this into the back of plug this into the back of the floppy and it will go in the other thing we've done is that we've created this actually dongle um so instead of plugging this directly into the back of the machine you actually plug this into the back of the machine you take your adb cable which is for your keyboard plug it into here and plug the other end into the meter. So now you ha can move this meter anywhere on your desk. You don't have to keep it behind the machine. So we have that. So that's also on the website. But anyway, back actually to the ROM. Uh, here we are. We have read this. Um, identified chips was working. Electrical test is working. There it is. I can go and program this to it, but it's going to take a while because it's a bit slower. This, uh, I mean, this is an eight megabyte chip, so megabyte chip. So it's going to uh, sim. It's going to take a while. Uh, let's see any comments here. Nice software, all very cool. Thank you, Garth. Uh, yes, join tonight in the um, Old World Tech Friday. I'm I'm so looking forward to it. Is there also a big a big macometer? <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, well, this, this, this is the macometer. I mean, I was just showing that. Uh, oh, Sloopy, thank you. You just bought that. If you do need, if you do need the ROM, the ROM sims, um, I'll let you know. I'll let you know when those are there. You can buy that too. And um, I won't charge you shipping on it. We'll just, we'll just throw it into the same, into the same box. Uh, Flint Rock, sorry, Trina, I won't be able to join you as it's 12.15. 12.15 for you already? Wow. You know, yeah, well, six hours ahead, yeah. I, ho I hope you do I hope you do um, get some sleep tonight, Flint. I know sometimes you have a hard time sleeping at night. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah, don't worry, Sloopy. We'll take care of it for you. We'll, we'll deal with that for you. But, yes, it's a very nice little device. Uh, this actually ROM sim programmer is it's it's I am so happy that it's back on the market. Um, I know a lot of people have been looking forward for it. I sorry, I turned off my light here. A lot of people were looking forward for this. Um, needed something. Um, I mean, it's been what four years off the market. So um, when we first downloaded the actually the actually Gerber files and that it was an old version. Um, some things were messed up. Some things were a bit difficult. That's why we had such a hard time getting it to work. But now it's done. It works. Um, I'm going to turn this one off. I can then unplug it, take out the ROM. So eight and four. So both of them work. Um, basically, the only advantage of having eight or four is it's going to allow you to have a larger image, a larger boot image that you can boot from directly from the ROM. Now, if you compress it, it will copy it to RAM, and then um, so just be aware that you may need a machine with some good amount of RAM. Um, so anyway, that's that's the ROM sim programmer. So um, I don't know what else. And you saw how quick how actually quick this was built. I need to put all these in my ultrasonic cleaner. They need to they need to get cleaned. Um, so. One, two, three, four, five right here. So these five will go in the ultrasonic cleaner and get cleaned. Um, I have my other five are over here. So then these are my other five. Um, I may run these through the ultrasonic cleaner again one more time. They still feel a little bit sticky to me. I think I need I need to clean that water and. Um, and put in some new some new solution and that it's pretty dirty 
I think that's why they're not becoming so nice and clean. But I need to buy some actually distilled water, and I'm running low on the SG solution. So anyway, um, let's see who's all here. Any questions, anyone? Any, anything anyone want to say? Thanks, Will. Insomnia is a bitch. Yes, it can be. Sometimes I just find something good on my iPad that I'm watching off of off of Netflix or off of off of Prime, and next thing I know, it's actually four o'clock in the morning, and I never slept. So anyway, sorry, I'm looking up in the space there because the monitor is up. It's up higher. The, my two SG screens are actually on top of each other, and so sometimes I have to look up for me to see what's on the other one. Anyway. Um, so anyone have any questions? And, um, how do we make a boot ROM image? Um, a boot ROM image is pretty much the same way you make an image for your blue SCSI or um, for your emulators. You basically have to start off with a blank image file um, off of the Big Mesa Wire file um, site. You can download some of those or you can make it yourself. Um, I don't remember that um, utility that is made. Uh, shoot, um, utility um, that's made that's out there to make every boot images. Um, it's 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 on the 68th and on Tinker Different. I can't remember the name of it. Someone someone know what it is? I'll throw throw that in the chat. Um, uh, I have some 49B for. Uh, if they can be used, I would just need the PCB for the ROM. It depends on the pinning, on, on the pinout. If the pinout is the same as the other ones, I mean, actually, 5 volt is fine. I mean, that's not a problem. Um, so just basically look at look at, look at the data sheet of the 29F, 29F8, um, 800. If it's all the same, then and then yes, Eric. Yes, thank you. If you like the video about his ROM programmer and so forth, hit that slash, hit the, hit that like button. Even if you don't like it, just smash it for me. Just go ahead. <laughs> anyway, um, Trina, I'm off. Okay, Trina, thank you. We'll see you later on 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 actually your show. Um, what what, what was I talking about? Um, the Yeti chip, yeah. Um, yeah, you'll have to you'll have to compare the actually data sheet. Look up the twenty nine F eight hundred. That's the ones I'm using. Um, if it can work for you, then um, I mean, if if you want some blanks, I can I can send you a couple blanks too. That don't matter. Um, so uh, they're technically three point three volt, but are five volt tolerant. You know what? Um, inter interesting you say that, Sloopy, because. Um, one of the things we were looking at was to try to use some chips that are not so expensive and that are a bit easier to get our hands on. Um, um, it's very easy to put on a, volta a voltage regulator and and then and then and then actually drop it. So that's not a problem. Um, they do that with actually RAM. Uh, well, I think you need more machines in there. Lol. No, I don't need no more machines. What you can't see is what is on the floor. Uh, see what's on the floor there behind me. You see all those packages right there. That's about eight. That, that's about eighteen actually logic boards that I have to go fix. Okay, so though that's all stuff that came down with me from from actual from from actually Florida. Uh, so I don't I don't need no more machines. That's why I'm not buying no more because I have so many things so many things that I'm working on, so many different projects, and I really enjoy the projects. You just I mean it's it's. It's fun to take something like this and that is nothing on it, and then make it and see it work. I mean, I mean, like with like with the Ashi Tash Ashi Twenty long budget boards, we have a new version of this coming out that's got two L, two two LEDs on it now that you can see power and you can see actually activity. So that's coming soon onto the onto the Kofi site because um, I did I did actually sell them all out, so I have some new ones. This was the actually original Tash Twenty. But it was a bit expensive to make. Um, another thing I'm working on is a ESP32 Wi-Fi modem. So and now I just built it. I have not loaded the the programs on it yet, or tested it, or done nothing with it yet. Anyway, so we have a lot of things that we're working on. Um, I'm soon going to be actually releasing um, on our GitHub 
the 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 um, SDL file for you to be able to print your own DB19. Very nice connectors. You can print these, order them off of actually JLC. I buy them from there. Um, they come to, depending on how many you buy, it's maybe less than actually a dollar each. We'll also provide you with a link so where you can buy the pins. I did find a pin that works pretty well from Amazon um, because I can't find them from the other suppliers. So, but this is this is going to become something free that that you can download and that you can actually do actually your own. We're also working on the actually female version of actually this. So anyway, uh, let's see what else. Well, thank you. Any more machines? I see. Oh my God. Well, uh, they won't work. The 29 are by 16 and TSOP 48. Okay, well, I'll, I mean, there's, we'll have to, I, I, I need to see, yeah, there, yeah, because I think mine are 48. Oh, no, I don't have them here. Where are they? Where's the bag? So, but, but yeah, this is a whole bag of, this is 20. This, this is the actually eight megabyte ones. This is for the eight meg ROM sims. This is for the four, uh, yeah, 12 of them. So I can make six. So anyway, so we do have quite a lot of things that are in the workings. Uh, what else is here now? Now that's what I want the Wi-Fi device. Eh. Uh, okay, yeah, so you're saying your SG-49 chips are by 8 and TSOP 32, yeah. Okay. Well, you may need you may need a four of them, but um, what if you were to put those four on the SG-8, on the, on the 8 megabyte stick? Uh, maybe that will work. Let me see where are those. Yeah, here. Uh, these are my eight megabyte sticks. I haven't even opened this this box yet. Well, uh, this package. Um, here, Sloopy. You see, these are, this is the ones I use for the eight, but if you're, but again, yeah, they're, they're the different package pinning. Yeah. And I don't think, I think the pinning too is the one won't work because you see, these are the fours and the eights. Okay, but if you can find the right package and everything and the right pinning is the same, and if it does require four chips, you can still put them on here. All the wiring should be the same because it just goes from one to the other, to the other, to the other, and then down. Um, it, they should work. So well, don't be surprised if, if you see a couple blanks come in your package. I might send you a couple blanks that way that way that way you've got them and you can try anyway what i was saying about the thing about the memory is um i bought some memory where is it where is it yeah here this is 30 pin sims they're 16 megabyte sticks Okay, and they have they are using a 3.3 volt chip, and it's got a voltage regulator here that will take it from five down to actually 3.3. So, if they can do this for RAM, why can't we do it for ROM? Hmm? Why not try it? Right? I mean, what does it hurt? Can it work? I'll have to get Joachim. Jo jo Joachim is the is the good designer on things to see what we can do with it. Maybe we can do something and make it work. 
maybe it won't. Both of those are both TSOP48. Yeah, I'm using TSOP48 chips. That's the thing. You'll need to find you'll need to find you'll need to find a 48 chip. And they have no home. I don't know if you can use them. I don't know. I don't know if you can use them for a ROM for uh, for the Max. I don't. I don't see why not. I mean, but then again, yeah. If you do, if you do four chips, if you do four chips, you may be able to because I mean a PLC. The actually PLCC ones are just, they're just, um, those are 32 also. Okay, I just had someone else buy something. All right. So anyway, so yeah, we're down to um, six of them sold now. So I only got three left. I was just that message that just came in. Someone else just bought another one. Um, so I am stroked. These things are selling. Yeah, not bad. Wow. Selling sell, selling some good things. So anyway, uh, folks, what I'm going to do is um, I have, I'm um, sorry, Trina and Frodo's show is starting in half an hour. Um, I would like to get some dinner before that starts so that I can join in without having to be stuffing my face while on, on, on a camera. So anyway, um, I really enjoyed this actually stream. Thank you for spending some time with me on making these ROM sim programmers and discussing about it. Um, Sloopy, let's see what else we can talk about and see. Maybe we can maybe we can come up with something together, uh, or may or make actually something work. Um, the these um, those of you that have bought them, they will they're leaving me on Monday from Cayman to go up to North Carolina over to Jake, and then Jake will get them, and then he will ship them out. They'll already be packaged and everything ready to go. So he just has to put them in a put them in a actually priority mail um, package and then send them out. Um, I'll be making some ROMs. Uh, these are going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner now. I uh, will be making some ROMs. I'll be making some more of the, of the Tash 20 and all that. So thank you for, thank you for spending some time with me. Um, I, I did share this on and opened it for others to join, but no one joined in. But it's okay. I mean, I still got to chat with everyone here, and we got to make a nice a nice ROM programmer. You saw it was not not that difficult to solder on these chips that seem to be a nightmare. But um, maybe tonight on... Uh, um, maybe tonight on the... On the... Um, I can never remember the name of the show. Um, Old Friday, Old Friday Tech Show or whatever. Um, I'll be making some of the ROMs. Maybe I'll I will open that up and um, join in and make them. So anyway, thank you for watching, everyone. And um, if you like the show, give it a like. Uh, make sure that you check out my coffee site. Um, it is coffee dash ko dash fi dot com slash kmac vintage. I can also be found on Twitter, KMac Vintage. Um, not on Facebook, not on Twitch, not on all those other ones. Um, too much actually social can take up too much of my time. Even so, look at it. I can't even do my own my own actually website, so I'm I'm using coffee instead. Anyway, thank you everyone, and um, we'll see you all, some of you all, or most of you all again in the next show that's starting in about 25 minutes. So please make sure that you join there. Anyway. Bye, everyone. Take care. Have a good evening.